How's everybody doing out there? Great. Yes, we're going to talk about surpassing your personal best, which keeps changing over time. But first, let me ask you some questions. Who here has a goal they want to achieve, a dream they want to realize, or a passion they want to discover? Good, I see some hands out there, great. Who here has thought, I don't know if I could do that, or had somebody say to you, you can't do that? Yeah, we can all relate to that type of experience. Well, I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. You can do all of these. You can achieve your goals, realize your dreams, and discover your passion. What it takes is managing barriers and having belief in yourself. My goal today is to leave you with three tips on what you can do to implement to put yourself in the position to meet all three. So who's in with me? Okay, excellent, 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 great. But first, I'm gonna tell you a story. Imagine being at that point in life where people say to you, when are you gonna retire? Why aren't you, why are you going to the gym so much? Why are you doing all of these things? Because I can. However, three years ago, just a little over three years ago, I discovered a new passion, and that is a passion for running. And even with that, people were saying, you're a woman of a certain age. Why are you running? And nobody's chasing you. Well, <laughs> because again, that's an example of an external barrier. We're going to talk about external and internal barriers. I did have some internal barriers. Initially, I avoided anything to do with running. Back hurt, legs hurt, all these things hurt. I never ran in school because I didn't think I could do it. And that was all going on in my mind. Internal barriers are those thoughts that we keep repeating and repeating and repeating that can hinder us. A friend, a very dear friend, fortunately took me under her wing and taught me how to run correctly. Since that time, I have participated in over 40 running events in the US and abroad. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. And I can remember walking that first 5K. Now, for those who are not runners, 5K is 3.1 miles. I don't know what this 0.1 thing is, but you know, <laughs> 3.1 miles. I walked that entire race and I came in last. And you know what? That was good because my goal was to finish. It didn't matter about everybody else. My goal was to finish. After that race, I then set a new goal to complete every race I start, do better than I did the time before, and not be the last one. That's it. Easy, well, I won't say easy, <laughs> the goals that I wanted to achieve. So the next year, I ran in that same event. Notice I said ran, not walked. I ran in that same event, I did not come in last, and I beat my time. Great. Perhaps you have a goal that you'd like to achieve, and you're thinking, well, somebody else has already done that, and I don't know if I can do it as well as they did. My advice to you is don't compare yourself to anybody else. Measure yourself against your own progress. I don't compete with other runners. I compete with what I did the last time around. I promise you some tools. So let's talk about the first thing to do. And change your mindset. There was a study by the, funded by the National Science Foundation that said that we experience 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot going on in our brains, isn't it? The sad part is 80% of those thoughts are negative. What's even worse? 95% of those thoughts are repetitive. So what's happening? 
negative thoughts over and over and over and over in our minds. So what's a person to do? My recommendation to you is, I like to say, flip the script. Instead of saying, I can't do that, ask yourself, how can I make this happen? And repeat the positive messages to yourself. If we're going to be repeating, why not repeat the good messages? Case in point, there was a time in my life when I walked away from a highly successful career in corporate America. And conventional wisdom says the best time to find a job is when you have a job. The best time to start a new career is when you have a career. To me, conventional wisdom was an example of an external barrier because that would have gotten in the way. And while I'm on barriers, who here can identify with that barrier called fear? Fortunately, I didn't know I was supposed to be afraid. So I did. I stepped out and said, I can do this. Tip number two, surround yourself with supporters while you are avoiding the naysayers. Sounds easy. <laughs> it's not. Those naysayers could be somebody you live with. They could be a colleague. They could be a friend. They could be a family member who thinks they're helping you. I mean, we do want constructive advice, right? Because barriers on the highway keep us from roll driving off the cliff. So you do want some constructive input. What you don't want is try somebody trying to stop you under the guise of helping. Are you sure you can do that? Really? What are you thinking? I'm telling you, this happened. What are you thinking? My recommendation, again, is change the dynamic of the thought. Tell them, yes, I have thought about it. I appreciate your concern, and I'm asking for your support. Notice how that changes the relationship. Instead of them constantly telling you what you cannot do, they then look to see how can they help you and how can they support you. This picture that I'm sharing is a group of my running supporters. Because I told you when I started running, people say, what are you thinking? Why are you doing this? Aren't you a little mature <laughs> to be running? We were out celebrating two of us, me for completing a half marathon and my other buddy for completing a full marathon. Because after I ran that 5K, I started thinking, well, what else can I do? What's next? Hmm, 8K? almost five miles. You know, why don't they just round it up? 8K was almost five miles. 10K, which is 6.2. 15K, which is 9.3. And I figured, well, let me try the big one, which for me, the big one was the half marathon, 13.1 miles. And it's great to have supporters. Same thing when I chose to leave my corporate career. I surrounded myself with people who were encouraging me along the way. Because when I left that career, I did not have the next one lined up. I had no idea what I was going to do. And I'll talk more about that when we get to third tactic, dream big. The sky's the limit of our imagination. Dream big and be willing to put in the work. When I said, I, I'm leaving corporate, the response I got from some people was, you're leaving an awfully cushy job. After all, you're the big boss. You could stay there until you retire. The thing was, I didn't want to stay there until I retired. I wanted to do something else with my life. What are some goals you might want to achieve? What is the biggest thing you can think of that you'd want to accomplish? What would you do? even if you weren't getting paid to do it. And then when are you going to start? For me, when I left corporate, my answer to every one of those questions was, I don't know. And it's okay not to have all the answers right away. What I did is I supported, surrounded myself with supporters. And about six months in, I realized I want to be a keynote speaker. 
I want to form my own company, which I did, Personal Development Solutions, LLC. And I wanted to help people be the best they could be, the best version of themselves, to focus on leadership development, helping people to grow. And I'm thrilled to have been able to do so. Back to my running journey. Well, I didn't just do one half marathon. I did three of them. I am on track this calendar year to run in four half marathons. And if I'm going to dream big, can a full marathon be too far behind? Now that I've put it out there, 26.2. Why not just 26? But 26.2 <laughs> miles. I also realized had I stayed in my corporate career, I would not have had the opportunities, the world of possibilities that I've experienced. When you tell yourself, how can I make it happen? Your brain works with you to come up with the ideas, to come up with the possibilities. Some of the experiences I've had include, I have run in nine states in the US in different events. I have run in three countries in Europe. Can you imagine running on the beach in Mykonos, Greece? Yeah, <laughs> it was absolutely incredible because I had already gotten rid of that internal barrier of, I can't do it. Hmm, do I really want to run? Instead, it was, what can I do to make running an adventure? What are some things that you can do that will improve your life? Who are people you can surround yourself with who will be your supporters? There will always be somebody who thinks your dreams are too big. They recognize that they're speaking from their own experience. They may not intentionally be trying to stop you. It just could be they're afraid, so they think you're going to be afraid. We always can have those thoughts in our mind that say, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. How can I change the script? How can I say, what can I do to make this happen? Even with the half marathon, it became, well, that's a long distance. How am I going to train to make it happen? Earlier I mentioned, I like to run in these events, not finish last and beat my last time. I had the privilege in one event to actually come in second place. And I got to stand on that podium <laughs> there as a woman of a certain age. It's never too late <laughs> to find your passion. It's never too late to think of what do I want my life to be like. As long as we're up and alive and breathing, we have that opportunity. What's your passion? What sets your heart afire? What get gets the juices flowing? Think about that. When you accomplish those goals, enjoy it. I enjoyed that win. Trust me, I enjoyed it. That was just January of 2020, in fact, down in Florida. I was there for a meeting. Hmm, there's a 5K. Let me go run in this 5K, and there we go. So think of your big goal, think of your big dream, think of who you can have as a supporter. Remember you're competing against yourself. And with that, recognize even if you don't reach the goal that you set, it's not a fail. Learn from it. Think about what can I do differently the next time? Maybe I need to get a different supporter to help me. Maybe there's something else I need to learn. And with that, I'm going to leave you with a quote by William James. This is something that guides me. Beyond the extreme of fatigue and distress, we may find amounts of ease and power we never dreamed ourselves to own. Sources of strength never taxed at all because we never pushed through the obstruction. Embolden your present and your future. Think of your dreams and dream big. Thank you.